Yes, we had a horrendous atrocities that happened on Shmini uh, Atzeret Simchas Torah, October 7th, as it's being called. Um, and we don't like to compare tragedies. But look, 80 years ago, 6 million Jews were uh, massacred. Um, one third of our people. And the uh, same question you can ask, where was God? Where was the protection? His chosen people. We just read God watches over us day and night. And uh, there were many, many good Jews, all good Jews, but many extremely devout Jews. So let me just say this, and I think it's critical to understand. We don't know God's mysterious ways. The idea of trying to point fingers at yourself or at anyone else is not a Jewish approach. It's just not Jewish. Let me quote Maimonides. Maimonides says, when a catastrophe happens, it would be cruel and insensitive to see it as a random event. What we need to do is to soul search, introspection, but not start looking for a cause. Maybe this happened, that happened. Look inside your soul. Since you're here on earth and you've witnessed it or experienced it, you need to do everything possible because that's how the world works. When, there's a, when you mend or correct something within yourself, it has an effect on the entire world. But I think you have to be very careful it's very dangerous to start saying the six million Jews, they were killed because there was assimilation or here there was rifts. Yes, there were rifts in our community. Yes, there, all of us are not perfect, including me and you and everyone on this program. But that's not the Jewish way. The Jewish way is saying, here's what happened. We don't understand why they'd be brutalized and so on. Anyone that tries to explain that and so on, is not just not... So my answer to the question is this. The Rebbe was a man of Torah, a man of God. He said clearly, it's not just what he's saying. He's quoting a verse. There's a verse in the Torah that says that the Holy Land has particular hashgacha, particular supervision of God. God watches over this land all the time. Now, you'll say, one second, so why were there any terrorist attacks? Even one person being hurt is already... We don't know the answer to that, but the verse still stands. What made the Jews so pow powerful was that despite setbacks and despite not understanding, our faith was never shaken. But I'm not judging anyone. I understand why people's faith would be shaken. It's totally legitimate, and I want to validate it. But that's why we dig deeper. We dig deeper, and the Rebbe, being a man of God, you think, of course he was pained when he saw whatever he saw, but then he, he was calling upon himself and upon all of us, we got to dig deeper. When we were in Egypt, the verse says in the Torah that the more they were oppressed, the more they thrived, the more they flourished, because that's the way. We don't understand the world. There's so much injustice. There's so many people hurt. There, there, there are deaths. There are tragedies. There are no answers to these questions. So the answer ultimately is there are many miracles in Israel. There are many miracles right now. The miracle that you and I are here. The miracle that all of us have life. But the miracle does not in any way so-called cancel out the tragedy. The tra we cry over it. We complain to God even. And we demand that God be just and God be kind and, and gracious in a revealed way. We fight the wars we need to fight with the enemy. But at the end of the day, we are not going to be defined by the pain and the suffering. We're not going to be defined by our enemies. We're going to be defined that we have a divine mandate and calling, that no matter what happens, we are continuing to forge ahead and be that holy nation that God wants us to be. Now you could say, one second, if God lets us down, why are we still committed? But that's, that's a sign of eternity. You know, I remember hearing from uh, quite a few Holocaust survivors telling me, I said, how could you sing the song Ani Mamin, I believe with complete faith, Shema, Kaddish, while you're being marched to the gas chambers? How is that possible? It sounds like ridiculous. It sounds like there was a time that the Jews could have been so angry at God. Where are you? You like abandon us. And yet they continue to praise God. They continue to thank God. So it either sounds delusional, it sounds like escapism, or something. But the fact of the matter is, and this is the answer, and I think everyone needs to hear this. this. is extremely important. What the Jews were saying, no, we're not delusional. We know exactly what's happening to us. And we're crying. We're losing our children. We're losing our lives. 
but we're declaring for now and forever as follows. You can take our lives, but you can't take our faith. You can take our bodies, but you can't take our soul. And if it won't be us, it will be our children. And if it won't be our children, it will be our grandchildren. We will prevail. That's what they were saying. They were in a place where they did not have control over their physical destiny, but they had control over their spiritual destiny. And look, everyone after the Holocaust said, the Jewish people are over with. Give them 20, 30 more years, they're gone. Read the obituaries of 1945. But it didn't happen because it never happened. Not after the Babylonian, after, and after the Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Greeks, the Persians, Haman, the Romans. I mean, I can go the whole list. Why? Because we have something more powerful than any darkness. And that is our connection to what we believe in. And that's exactly what has kept us together. We say it every by the Seder, we say it in so many prayers that in every generation we have our enemies, but we stand strong with God. So what the Rebbe was saying is a true leader, like a commander in chief. Yes, we had a setback, but we're not stopping the battle. We're not retreating. You know, what does a commander in chief do? We can't do it this way, we'll go that way. And the Rebbe led the Jewish people by making that statement that Israel remains God's promised land and holy land, and it will happen. It didn't happen yet. You know, we had a setback. We pray for it. We, we, we complain. I'm not in any way suggesting it's not a setback when a person dies, but we still forge ahead. And I think it is a paradox in some way, but that's that's the way. I mean, I don't see an alternative. I mean, Schiffer, you could talk about your own personal life if, if you want to, but I don't see an alternative. The other alternative is to sink and give up and resignation. No, so yeah. Think, it, 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 no, we're in a, we're in a very, very... Sinking is not an option, especially, right. you know, it's really interesting when we look at, I have so much to say, when we look at the videos of like a million haters, Jew haters, humanity haters, like rising up in the streets of giant cities. And it, and, and at, at first I was so appalled and I mean, I'm still appalled, but I had this kind of flash of insight the other day where it seemed like this has to be part of what has to happen, that people get shown for who they really are. 